Welcome back to the latest episode of TT Plays. I'm freshly back from Ascent. Franklin is happy I'm home. He's really hungry. I've got to feed him here soon. But I did want to give you the rundown of what I thought freshly coming back from Ascent Houston. So first of all, just spoilers will come to the end. I thought Ascent Houston was great. Uh, I have some minor quibbles uh, and I have a lot of praise and we'll kind of run through this here. I'm not going to be too effusive on things. We're going to keep this low tech and like all my videos, we're going to keep it brief, shooting for that under 10 minutes thing. So let's start with the location. So I think Houston's a fine spot, Central America, uh, which, which makes it great for American travel. There were definitely a lot of international people, some wonderful people I met from down under. And the international airport there was great. Uh, pr other pros of it is the venue space itself. Like the event, the space they had for the events, really large, really spacious, a little bit crammed on the middle tables, especially in the early rounds, kind of like an airplane, didn't have room for a full play mat. But again, um, you know, they were trying to fit 256 people in there. We only ended up with 207, which is still a great showing. They could have probably reorganized the tables a little bit. The hotel rooms themselves, I thought were very affordable, about 100 US a night. You split that between two people. I think that's really reasonable. You ended up with two queen beds. There was lots of food and stuff within walking distance. There was like a couple of pharmacies there. So I could get snacks, I could get water. And, you know, when the event was done, we could walk down the street and get bad Chinese food if that's what we wanted. So all those things about the venue, I thought were great. Some of the cons about the venue, the lobby space was really small, which doesn't sound like a big deal. But if you've ever been to like a big Magic Fest or big Flesh and Blood event, right, tons of people want to play games and there was no space for us to play it. Like we're kind of bleeding into the restaurant before they kicked us out of there. We're playing on like these tiny coffee tables. Um, you know, they ended up taking over a bar for a trade night, which was crazy, but I wish there was more lobby space or kind of free space for us to utilize kind of before and after convention hours. It would have been nice in order to kind of like facilitate these casual games and trading there on site as opposed to having to go somewhere else. My other quibble about the location is its distance from the airport. I thought it was great. There's an international airport close, but it was about a 45 to an hour ride, depending on traffic. We had to go through downtown Houston to get there. And the Uber rides about 50 to $60, depending on surge pricing there. So I wish it could have been a little closer to the airport. And I just wish there was space for us when the convention wasn't going. A lot of people got in town Thursday. Most of us got in town Friday. Friday night, we were all kind of chomping at the bit. And we all kind of had to disperse and go to other places that weren't the hotel in order to play. So the events themselves, I thought were great. Uh, we basically had steel, silver, and check-ins, right? Steel was their competitive standard event. Silver is their crazy, like, questing collection event. And then side events, they had classic construct, or they had sealed events, um, which cost $40. And then they had standard events, which ended up running you $20. So I thought all of the events were very well run between the staff and the judges and shout out to Yeti Gaming, who apparently was heavily involved there. I thought it was great. The uh, parent to student ratio for judges, I think was about one in 10. So there were tons of floor judges running around. Now they don't have an organized formal judge program yet, but the judges there were all really knowledgeable, really friendly. And the few times I did hear judges say that they didn't know the answer, which I think is a great answer, by the way, as someone who's judged in magic and flesh and blood, they went and got another judge and they got the right answer. So I thought the judges were all great, really knowledgeable, really friendly. And so was the staff almost kind of effusive in their ways of trying to make you happy and things of that nature. So I thought all of that was great. Everyone was really helpful there. The community itself was also phenomenal. You know, I didn't play one person was kind of grumpy, but again, Played eight rounds over 12 hours, right? Everyone was really nice, really friendly, just happy to be there. I thought the pricing was very generous. I thought the pricing for the convention was also very cheap, very affordable, right? $65 was the base ticket, and that got you a free playmat and a promo. That, that's great, right? If we value the playmat somewhere between 40 and 60 bucks, then you're, you're basically playing for free. And if you look on eBay right now, those playmats are going for more than that price I just quoted you. Um, the pricing itself, you got a hundred tickets per win, which means over day one, right? I, I went five and three. I missed cuts, but that, that was okay. I'm not upset about that. I think I played well, uh, I was happy with the performance, right? but that was an extra 500 tickets it means I had 900 tickets. I was able to get my place at a hasty messengers and a play mat. And I, you know, picked up some other tickets and some trades and things and picked myself up a second play mat for a friend who couldn't make it. So I thought the pricing was very generous. The uncut sheets were really cool. Um, I'm not a big uncut sheets guy. I've got a couple magic, the gathering ones in my office here, but their uncut sheets are really cool. They had doodle animals there. They had quicksilvers. They had some really cool uncut sheets, uh, you know, just things I didn't think of. So I thought that was really cool. I'm still waiting for that CSR uncut sheet. So I thought the pricing was really great. And I thought the events were very affordable. So some of the cons, and this is a minor one, but a lot of people express consternation about it, right? And at the core, there's a lot of try hard nerds there and the tiebreakers weren't clear. Um, due to the nature of Grand Archive, you're just going to get ties. People are going to go, 
one, one, and one in their match. People are going to go one, one in their match. And you're going to end up with wonky records where people are like five wins, one match, five match wins, one match loss, two match ties. And then like, do games win matter more there? Is it your win loss? I assume ties are better than a loss, but there's just a lot of murky uncertainty there. And it just wasn't really clear. And every round is the round would complete conclude. You'd hear a bunch of people asking. Now I, I decided to play an aggro fire deck. So it didn't end up with a lot of draws. So my ties were really straightforward. I wasn't worried about it. I'm like, I gotta go X and two to make day two. Again, we went X and three. That's fine. But just some clarity about the tiebreakers. There also was a cataclysmic software failure, which I don't hold them responsible for. I actually really appreciated how they kept us up to date about that. It was coming up from a lunch break. I don't really like lunch breaks. That's a minor quibble. I would rather just keep it going, grind down, eat a pop tart. But there was a lunch break that ended up scheduled for one hour, ended up being two hours because they basically had to manually repair us. And then after that, tiebreakers were just kind of out the window. No one really kind of knew what was going on there. So I wish there was a little more clarity around what and how the tiebreakers were weighed because I did hear a lot of people talking about them in between rounds. Because again, Grand Dark, I have best out of three. You're just going to have some ties sometimes, especially if people are both playing tier three heroes uh, decks, right? You just kind of run out of time. Uh, I wish there was a stream for more than just the top eight. A lot of people are interested in the game. A lot of people continue to be more interested in the game. I wish we were doing a, you know, just putting the game out there a little bit more. Top eight streams, great. I just wish we could have streamed all through day one and more in day two. I wish the side events were a little more, I guess there were just more side events, to be honest. Uh, basically, you could do sealed, and then there was one standard event each day. So the problem is, right, we had 207 people in steel. We could have had 256. Only 32 of them were playing in day two, right? So in, in our given scenario, we have just over 175 people, but we could have had over 200 people, and only 64 of them could play in the standard side event. So I don't know what the rest of the people were supposed to do. I wish it was a little bit more of a maybe just like fill and fire standards with, with maybe a little bit less prizing, but I just wish there were more things people could do if they weren't playing in the main event, or maybe they just had a really bad day. They drop that in the main event. They want to change decks. I just wish there was more things for them to do instead of one standard event each day. And then if you want, you could try to get in a fill and fire for some sealed events. So I, I just wish it was more of a total weekend event as opposed to you really showing up for this kind of one thing to put it in flesh and blood terms. It was closer to a battle hardened, um, then it was like a calling with all the different side events going on. Uh, my last kind of complaint was just the last minute updates. Again, the main event sold out ages ago and a lot of people wanted to go and there were, a lot of people were considering just going for side events, but there was no information about what any of the side events were until literally the week of. So that's something easy to fix. And I'm sure they'll get better at it as, as they continue to move forward. So those are my kind of pros and cons of the event there in general. So I do want to talk about, or the events, I do want to talk about Ascent in general. And I, I really did love the branding. It felt very professional. It made it reminded me of like when I was on the pro tour for magic, it's, it really felt like they cared about it. It felt like they were a big company. I, I know it seems silly, but like tons of banners, wall placards all over the place, showcasing all the gorgeous art for the game. I thought that was really cool. Again, I, I said it before, but the staff was phenomenal, whether they just work in the check-in counter or the, you know, the, the, the two la the wonderful ladies at the prize wall. I thought they were great there. The judges were really great. And so was the community. So I did really appreciate the effort and I'm sure money that went into getting that squared away. You know, they had a handful of vendors. I think there were four vendors and two artists there. The artists were phenomenal doing doodles, had some fantastic Uther and Bedivere mats there. The Bedivere mat is absolutely stunning. There's so much detail on that card that you just don't see until you blow it up and make it kind of play mat sized. Um, so I thought that was all great. It was nice having vendors there. They were actually buying uh, whip without your deck from Chicago it was actually buying at a really, really great rate. Um, and they basically had any singles you could imagine there. The FTC redemptions were super quick. If you end up getting that um, uh, creative shock promo voucher, which is supposed to be mailed to in the future, I thought that was done really, really well. So all in all, again, I loved the event. I loved the effort that went into the event. There were just those kind of minor things that I thought they could kind of tweak moving forward. And those are things that I think we need to keep in mind because they announced that Ontario was happening February 10th to 11th. So one of the big things I learned is don't fly home Sunday night because they ran pretty late. If I was lucky enough to make day two and do really well, right, you were going to play into the evening. And on top of that, their announcement was that night as well. So 
I'm definitely planning on flying home the 12th from that. So flying in the 9th, flying home the 12th. Just kind of take that extra day. Worlds is going to be the 10th, 11th, and 12th. And same thing there. You know, I, I'm not imagining I'm going to be playing late on day three of Worlds. But again, I don't want to miss any of the event. So I'm going to go ahead and fly home on Monday for that event as well. I'm going to sign up early. And personally, I'm going to buy the higher tier ticket. So they ended up with this beautiful roll down die that was selling extremely well. So if you just want to fence it, you could kind of sell that thing out pretty quick. And the Nia Dex box that they had was quite frankly gorgeous. My only complaint about their deck boxes is they're both open top. So like a main deck and a material deck. I wish there was somewhere you could keep counters or things like that. But their deck boxes are great. You'll have no problem moving those along if you need to. So I do recommend buying tickets early for these things. Again, Ontario, February 10th to 11th. Um, that's just another quote unquote ascent and then worlds in Las Vegas, the 10th, 11th and 12th. So plan on being there for the full weekend. Don't try to cut out early on the day. Like we did. Uh, you might end up missing some stuff. So again, I really enjoyed ascent. If you made it out to ascent, let me know down below what you thought about it. Let me know what your favorite parts were. I really just like getting to know the community, kind of putting names to faces and everyone like that. I'm excited to get playing. We obviously have store championships coming up here pretty soon in October. This had that big announcement with their new kind of like print and play balance cards, which will be super interesting, which we'll have more information on. I'll do a video on kind of in the future. But again, high level ascent review. I thought it was great couple minor quibbles about things but i'm looking forward to going to ascent in ontario i'm going to skip auckland i've been to auckland it's gorgeous it's just really far away so if you're going to ontario plan on getting there the day before plan on staying all of sunday hopefully they had some more side events so that sunday gets some extra value but just in case you do really well you don't have to miss your flight to fly home so uh thank you grand archive thank you weebs of the shore for running ascent it was wonderful congrats to cabin and everyone else at true champion game i think all three of them made top eight which is just phenomenal and until next time everyone cheers and happy gaming